Hello students, welcome to Meso Study again. In the today's session, we will be discussing about some certain CBSC pattern question exercise for the chapter ecosystem. So, as we have completed the chapter, now it's time to revise some of question. It's just a revision class to tell you what type of question can be asked. So, let's start the today's session with question number one. So, question number one to three is of a one mark. Let's start with the question number one. How is stratification represented in forest? Stratification means vertical layer are present and these vertical layer when we talk about in a forest. Let us take an example of uh, suppose you are flying somewhere and you are uh, sitting on a plane. What you will see and you are passing through a forest. What you will see only a dense forest or trees you will be able to see. But you will not be able to see the herb, sh shrubs and the grasses. Yes, this is a fact. Now, suppose let us talk about another example. A monkey is there who is uh, sitting on a tree. A tall tree, an emergent tree is there. He is sitting over there. He will see that certain small trees, they are present. If a squirrel is present, a squirrel is sitting on those trees, that squirrel will be able to see the herbs, basically herbs and the shrubs. Normally, the shrub height is more. But as you can see, as the vertical layers are present of different trees, vertical layers that is called as a stratification. That stratification which they are asking in question, they start from a very base layer which is called as a grasses, which is present on the ground. Then we have is a herbs present. More taller we have is a shrubs present. After that we have is a tree present. The canopy trees are there, the tall emergent trees are there, understory trees are there, right? These are called as a stratification. So let's write about the stratification. Stratification means vertical layer, vertical layer, right? Now this vertical layer they always start with the base that is on the base you can see grass is there, grass is there. After the grass we have is herbs present. After the herbs what we can see is shrubs are there. Above shrubs, here I am discussing that height of grasses they are very less as compared to the herbs. Height of shrub is much more than that of a herbs and the grasses. After that we can see the trees are present. Trees are present. This is called as a vertical layering. Even in tree, three type of trees that is can be distinguished on the basis of the height. Towards the lower side that means towards the shrub or near to the shrub height we have is under story tree. Under story tree. After that we have is another layer which is above we have is a top emergent tree. Top emergent trees are there. And in between you can see the canopy trees are present, canopy trees and these canopy tree they look like a umbrella is there which is above the forest and because of the canopy tree you cannot see if you are flying on a plane you cannot see what are the herbs and the shrubs and the grasses they are present. So these are the different type of trees present this is called as a vertical stratification. This was the first question. Let us move on to the next question that is a question number 2. So, just read this question. Write the equation that help in deriving the net primary productivity of ecosystem. In the productivity, we have learnt about two important terms. One is called as a gross primary productivity, second is called as a net primary productivity. So, first we have is a gross primary productivity and 
and second one is called as a net primary Question is saying that we have to derive a relationship between a gross primary productivity and net primary productivity. In the session, we have learned about the gross primary productivity. What is this gross primary productivity? In a shorter form, they are also called as GPP and this is called as a NPP, right? So GPP means what? GPP means rate at which the organic substances they are produced by plants when sun rays they are falling on it and the process by which the organic substance are formed that is called as a photosynthesis that is called as a GPP. So that is a total rate of organic substance produced by producers. Total rate of organic substance produced by produce producers with the help of photosynthesis when a sunlight is falling on it that is called as a GPP. Now when we talk about a GPP, GPP is a very broad term but NPP is a little lower than the GPP. Now what is the NPP that is a rate of biomass production in a one line we can write this is a rate of biomass production now what do you mean by biomass when we talk about a plant plant normally undergo photosynthesis when they undergo photosynthesis organic substances are produced organic substances which are produced that will be utilized for the growth. Some of those organic substances will helpful in the biomass production whereas some energy will be dissipated because of the respiration process because biomass production they also need energy and that energy is will be lost with the help of a respiration. So if we have to derive a relationship the GPP is equal to NPP that is a net primary productivity minus R. Now what is R over here? We have discussed in session that is called as a respiratory loss. Respiratory loss, right? So this was a question number 2 and when we talk about a derivation that GPP is equal to NPP minus R sorry this is NPP plus R. The NPP is equal to GPP minus R. This is the relationship because this is a total and this is a biomass and this is lost in the form of respiration right. This is a relationship. Now this was a question number 2. Let us move on to the next question, question number 3. So read this question properly. What is a detritus food chain made up of? How do they meet their energy and nutritional requirement? They are asking about a detritus food chain. Detritus food chain they are made up of detritivores or they are made up of decomposer. They are made up of decomposer. What are decomposers? Decomposers can be a fungi they can be any bacteria as well, bacteria as well, right. They are also called as a detritivores. Now second part says how do they need energy, how do they meet the requirement of the energy and the nutritional requirement. What these decomposers do? Suppose a plant is there in a forest, animals are also there. After some time the plants will die, some of the litter they will fall on the earth's surface, even the animal will also die. We know the animal body as well as the litter they will be made up of which substances? Organic substances, right? Those organic substances will be decomposed by decomposer. 
if they are decomposed by decomposer, definitely there will be release of inorganic substances and those inorganic substances can be a carbohydrates or any nutrients, right? So that is called as a decomposition and this is how they obtain their energy. So if you have to write this question, you have, you can write organic substances. Now hope you can write by yourself organic substances. What are these organic substances? That means a dead remain of plant and animal. They will be decomposed by the decomposers and due to which they will be converted into the inorganic substances. Now these inorganic substances can be a carbon dioxide, they can be any nutrient as well. Right? So this was a question number 3. Now with, the, with which we have completed the one type of question. Let us move on to the next category. Question number 4. Now why I have chosen the same question? Question number 3 and the question number 4 is almost same. But the thing is that it just to tell you how to attempt such type of question, what you have to write in a 1 marks, what you have to write in a 2 marks. As it is of a 2 marks and question states how does a dead organic matter get decomposed in nature. That means dead organic matter, that means they are talking about the detritus food chain, detritus food chain. detritus food chain. In case of detritus food chain what happens is organic substances they are converted into inorganic substances by the action of microbes, by the action of bacteria, by the action of fungi due to which these organic substances they will be engulfed by the bacteria and so that they will get the nutrient requirement. This is what you have to answer in this. When we talk about the detritus food chain, when I have was discussing in the session, in the decomposition process, we have discussed about the different process in which the humification, that is a very, very, very important process. The larger organic substances, they are converted into the smaller organic substances and that is called as a humus formation. So that is a detritus food chain in which the organic substances converted to inorganic substances, they will be sucked by the bacteria. Now let us move on to the next question. So this is a question number 5, again it is of 2 marks. Why the pyramid of energy is always upright explain. Now when we talk about this pyramid. Pyramid is a graphical representation on which the different trophic levels they are arranged. They can be on the basis of energy, they can be on the basis of biomass, they can be arranged on the basis of the number as well. In this question they have mentioned about the pyramid of energy. Here the PP, can you see this PP is here, here this PP means primary producer. So I am writing over here. Second, this is a PC which means a primary consumer. Third one is a secondary consumer. And this is a TC which means a tertiary consumer. Right. This is how the different trophic levels they are arranged. To talk about those trophic level which is present at the base, they are the primary producer. Let us take an example of a forest ecosystem. In forest ecosystem, who is a primary producer? The green plants are there. So green plants, they will fix the light energy and they will convert into a chemical energy and they will store all the nutrients in the form of the organic substances. 
in the primary consumer let's talk about a herbivore is there herbivore they will feed on plant right in the secondary consumer we have we can take an any other example like carnivores are there and the tertiary consumer let's take an example of a top carnivore like lions are there the tigers are there consumer when these consumer or the herbivore they are feeding on the green plants the amount of energy which is transferred that is very 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 less that is only according to the lindemann only 10% of energy is transferred from a one level to another as we move upward from primary consumer that means a herbivore the deers are there they will be fed upon by the secondary consumer and these secondary consumer they will obtain energy and some of the energy will be dissipated in the form of a heat very less amount of energy only 10% energy will be remained in that secondary consumer which will be present in their biomass after that the tertiary consumer as they are depending upon the secondary consumer only 10% of energy will be transferred rest 90% will be dissipated so if you calculate when energy is transferred from one trophic level to another 90% is lost in the form of a respiratory loss that's why it is always said that only 10% of energy is transferred rest all is dissipated so if you plot a such type of graph you will always get a upright position this is a upright this is always upright right so let's write if you have to write for such question energy transferred from one trophic level to another is very less is very less so pyramid is upright only pyramid of energy is upright right this you have to remember right so this was a question number 5 let's move on to the next question question number 6 so sixth question is also from the same category name the two type of nutrient cycle existing in nature very good question and very direct also where are their reservoir present in state the function of reservoir so when i was discussing about the cycles the biogeochemical cycle we have discussed about the two type of cycle one is called as a gaseous cycle and second is called as a the sedimentary cycle so let's talk about types of nutrient cycle of nutrient cycle one is called as a gaseous cycle and second one is called as a sed sedimentary cycle right gaseous cycle in this we have an example of carbon cycle nitrogen cycle etc whereas in sedimentary cycle we have an example of a phosphorus cycle and the sulfur cycle right we have discussed about these two type of cycle in detail in the sessions so you have to write about the these two type of cycles in a bit of detail because it's just a two marks so don't read don't write any stories so where are their reservoir present to talk about the gaseous cycle the reservoir are in is in atmosphere whereas in sedimentary cycle the reservoir is a lithosphere or the land or the earth crust
lithosphere. Right? Now, state the function of reservoir. Now, function is that reservoir basically they act as a source and gives us the information regarding the influx and outflux. So, reservoir they become deficit whenever there is an imbalance in the influx and outflux. This is a function of reservoir, right. So, this was a question number 6, right. Let us move on to the next question. Why is earthworm considered as a farmer's friend? Earthworm. What is the scientific name of earthworm? That is a ferritima posthuma. Ferritima posthuma. That is a ferritima posthuma. Now, they are asking why is earthworm considered as a farmer's friend? There are so many reasons for that. Earthworm they feed on the detritus which is present on the earth crust. They feed on the freshly fallen lit litter. They ingest it, later on digestion happen within their gut and once they ingest out those which, he, uh, which they have taken in their mouth, once they ingest out that is called as a cast. That is also called as a vermi cast and that vermi cast is a very rich source of different nutrients. The whole NPK content which is good for a plant growth that is a nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium that is a very good source of means they are in a, present in a very large amount in earthworm cast. This is the first function. Another function is that earthworm they make the soil porous because they normally there are different species. Some of species they live on the earth surface, some species they live on a deeper layer. When from a deeper layer they come to the surface, they make a hole in between the soils due to which the soil become porous. As the soil become porous, the whole aeration of the soil increases and which is very important for the growth of a plant. That is why the earthworm is considered as a farmer's friend. Now, we have a two reasons for that. That is they help in decomposition of detritus. help in decomposition of detritus. Second is the increases the aeration, increases the aeration process because they make the soil porous. They make the soil porous. That is why earthworm is considered as a farmer's friend. Explain a humification and the mineralization occurring in a decomposition cycle. Now, what is a humification? We have discussed about the humification in detail. I will just give you a definition of humification. If you want to learn in detail regarding the humification, you can go back to the session and you can revise from there. So, the humification is the process of accumulation of humus. Accumulation of humus. Now question arises, what is a humus now? Humus is a dark colored amorphous substance. Dark colored amorphous substance. Right? And this humus is resistant to bacterial action. they are resistant to microbial or bacterial you can write any anything microbial action right second process which they are asking is a mineralization step mineralization step is that whenever this humus is broken down into a smaller inorganic substances that is called as a mineralization that means to release the minerals or the nutrient so that means humus is there 
and humus is what? Organic substance. If that is being broken down into inorganic substances and due to which there is a release of nutrient, this process is called as a mineralization process. Come back to the question. So this was the question number 7. So this is how you have to answer. Let us move on to the next question. <coughs> Draw and complete the following model of a carbon cycle filling A, B, C, D, E and F. Now, we know the carbon cycle is there. What will be the reservoir? Reservoir is atmosphere. So, CO2 is present in the atmosphere. CO2 which is present in the atmosphere that will be taken by the plant. When they will be taken by the plant? What is the process of that? That is called as a photosynthesis. So here A means a photosynthesis. So green plants are undergoing photosynthesis. They will fix the carbon dioxide which is present in the atmosphere. Now let us talk about what is the B over here. Plants releases carbon dioxide and that process is called as respiration. So the B is a respiration. Now, let us come back to the C. Animals also releases carbon dioxide. We also releases carbon dioxide. And V releases carbon dioxide by which procedure? Respiration only. So, the C is again respiration. Now, there is a something and that something, when something happens to that something, they also releases carbon dioxide. Now, what is these two somethings? Something over here, these are the fossil fuels and this is the burning or the combustion of fossil fuels. Fossil fuels, when we burn the fossil fuel, what is released? Carbon dioxide. So, here the first of all, let us talk about a E. Sorry, this is a F. So, F means, F means what? That is a fossil fuels. Do I need to explain about fossil fuels? coal, petroleum, etc. After that, a D is written and D means burning or combustion of fossil fuel. Right. Now, here from the atmosphere, what this carbon dioxide is entering somewhere. Later on, some deposition happens due to which the calcareous sediments they are deposited. Now, what do you mean by E over here? Carbon dioxide, they are not only taken by the plants, they are also taken up by certain green substances which is present in the ocean. The phytoplanktons are there. That means they are referring to a aquatic food chain. So, here the E means aquatic food chain. Aquatic food chain, aquatic food chain, right. So this is a whole process of a carbon cycle. We have identified A that is a photosynthesis, B is a respiration, C is again a respiration, D means combustion of fossil fuels or the burning of fossil fuels, F means the fossil fuels and E means the aquatic food chain, right. So this was a question number 8. Let us move towards the next question that is a question number 9. So question number 9 and in 10, two questions are left. Each the question, both the questions they are of 5 marks each. So let us move forward with the first part of question number 9. Draw a pyramid of number of a situation when the large population of insect feed upon a big tree. The insect in turn are eaten up by the small birds, which in turn are eaten up by a big birds. Now, listen to this. When we talk about the process of nutrient cycling, what is happening? The energy is transferred. When the energy is transferred, that means they are discussing about the pyramids. And here they are discussing about which pyramid? Pyramid of number. So let us understand what they are saying. 
they are saying a big tree is there a big tree is there on a big tree thousands of insects are present so small insects are present and these small insects they are feeding upon a big tree right these small insects they are eaten up by small birds they are eaten up by small birds and these small birds they are eating small insects and these small birds they are eaten up by the big birds vultures etc right so i have to make a pyramid of number for it i have written over here a big tree is there so if i have to draw the first producer it will be like this a big tree is present on a big tree we are referring to a number that's why i have made the whole block a smaller one small insects are present small insects we know they are present they will be present in a very large amount right after that we have is a small birds small birds will be there obviously they will be more than a one number that is a one tree after that we have is a big birds which will be much smaller in number so this is called as a pyramid of number this is called as a pyramid of number now in the question they are asking about what is the shape of this pyramid of number this shape is called as a spindle shaped this is called as a spindle shaped so what we will get is a spindle shaped pyramid of number so as it is a five mark question first of all you have to explain about the pyramid of number then you have to explain about how there is a difference in the number that you have to explain after that you have to draw a pyramid of number for this example and what is the shape that is a spindle shaped right so be careful while attempting as it is a long answer type question let's move on to the second part differentiate giving reasons between a pyramid of biomass of above situation and the pyramid of number that you have drawn now they are asking about a biomass again come to this side tell me one thing who will be having more biomass a tree will be having a more biomass or insects will be having definitely tree will be having more biomass after that the biomass of insect will be like this after that the biomass of a small birds will be like this the biomass of another that is a big birds will be much much lesser as compared to the tree biomass so this is a pyramid of biomass pyramid of biomass what you have to write in this as the pyramid of biomass is tree of a big tree is much more as compared to the other trophic level that is why the pyramid of biomass which will be obtained in the above example will be always upright so in this also you have to first explain about the pyramid of biomass then you have to take this example and then you have to give the shape of this pyramid so this was a question number 9 this is how you have to attempt let's move on to the last question of today's session a very direct question and a very easy also that is a carbon cycle in nature is a bio geochemical event why and explain when we talk about the carbon cycle carbon cycle the two sources are present one is the atmosphere and second the calcareous rocks they are present in the atmosphere as we we can go back to the question that is a question number 8 this is how a bio geochemical cycle this is how a carbon cycle is like this now in this carbon cycle what happens the green plants this is what you have to explain in this you have to draw this whole cycle what is the source of this cycle why carbon is important when we talk about a normal composition of carbon around 70% of a human body that is made up of carbon only plants 
whenever the plants they will do photosynthesis they will fix this carbon dioxide and this is the whole cycle that you have to explain carbon cycle we have already discussed in the session to try to explain try to elaborate that in this you have to explain about these aquatic food chain as well and one more thing whenever they these plants and animal die they will enter into a detritus food chain detritus food chain there will be after that those inorganic substances which will be released by the detritus suppose they will be flowed to the nearby water bodies they will deposit in the form of a calcareous se sediment right this is how you have to explain right so students we have discussed around 10 questions some questions from 1 marks 2 marks 3 marks and the 5 marks hope this session is clear to you we'll meet you in the next session we'll discuss about a new chapter till then take care of yourself thank you so much students for watching this